Hello Fiber friends and welcome to this historical spinning Viking Age cloth project that I'm kicking off. We've had a tiny taste of this when we did the recreation of the distaff that was found in the Lenbreen Pass dated back to the Viking Age. That was a fun experiment with uh, the, the distaff. I have it right here. I encourage you to go watch that video if this is something you're interested in. This book is going to be our guide as we push forward. Uh, this book is wonderful because it has so much information about the actual structure of the cloth in these garments that were discovered, still existing hundreds of years from when they were used as burial shrouds. The information in here is so specific. It even tells us if we need to use S twist or Z twist. And as a spinner, when I saw that this information was here, I freaked out and I thought, I have to do this. And what we're looking at here to recreate some of this cloth is dual coated sheep. Those are the Northern European short tailed varieties of sheep. And they have a particular characteristic, which is that they have two coats. They have an outer coat, which is long, silkier, a little more coarse, and an inner coat, which is softer, fluffier, and maybe even warmer. Let's start by looking at the fiber I have that we will be preparing today. <laughs> it smells like sheep, and I love that smell. <laughs> this is, a uh, piece of a fleece. It's not the whole thing, but it's a good amount. Uh, and it has these adorable little curls. Look at that little curl. Can you see it against the... <laughs> With Icelandic sheep, we have two Icelandic words that we use to describe the characteristics of the fleece. We have the tog, which is the long outer coat. And then we have the thel, which is the fluffy inner coat, the softer, maybe warmer fibers. This book is specifically looking at surviving fabric from Greenland, but this is a particular characteristic that has been noted in other surviving garments from the time period from Norse fabric, which is that the inner and outer coats of the dual coated sheep are separated and the outer coat is spun strong and tight and it is used as the warp part of the weaving and the inner coat the softer fluffier coat is spun looser and it is used as the weft of the weaving so i am going to get this fleece separated today i'm going to use combs to do this and i have several different combs i'm not sure which one is going to work the best for doing this work i'm going to try out a few different ones and as i do i'd like to talk about the combs and why some combs are better for some purposes than others because not all combs are alike <laughs> so let's get let's get working on this now I do have to say just as a disclaimer with combs they're sharp they're dangerous keep them away from children keep them away from pets they can even hurt you so be careful as you're using them these are serious tools not to be taken lightly uh, they can hurt you in that same vein there's a picture in this book <laughs> Please don't do this to where it has the tines coming down onto the person's leg. We're, we're going to keep them away from our leg. Don't, don't stab yourself in the leg. That would not. No. Okay. I'm going to start with my Valkyrie fine combs. The fine refers to how far apart the teeth are spaced. Uh, these I have recommended as just a good... Um, multi-use comb. They're kind of in the middle, they're smaller, they're easy to handle, they're in the middle in terms of how much they're going to um, be able to pull things apart, blend things, all of that. So let's try these first and see how they work. I'm not really worried about lining up all the butts and um, it, it can be done that way. It's very time consuming for a true worsted yarn. People like to line up the butts of the fiber, keep the tips together, uh, but I'm, I'm just kind of sampling right now, so we're just going to um, 
not fuss too much with the actual direction of the fibers. And I'm going to take my other comb at a 90 degree angle and comb through just like that. And what that's doing is opening up these locks and transferring the fibers from one comb to the other. I can flip this around and come at it from the other side. I want to get everything off that I can. All right, so I've transferred from this comb to this comb. We have a lot of floof over here, and it just looks floofed, <laughs> but not separated. I'm going to check what was left on that comb, and it is kind of trash. It's, it's little itty bitty, um, just kind of some neps, some snarl bits. So I might use this for stuffing, but I don't think this is going to be what I'm looking for for this particular project. So I'll just put this to the side as waste. This is the first pass. All right, I've combed what I could get off of this second pass. So let's see what we are left with on this comb. Yep, there's still a lot of naps that we're pulling out. See, this is a second cut. This is where the shearer went over and then and then cut again a second little piece off of there it happens um some snarls yeah these are short these are these are really short little bits and that's not that's not going to be spinnable there are some longer pieces in here uh so i might go over oh but look at all that yeah that's that's not really spinnable right there um okay so i'll put this aside Maybe use that for stuffing or something. <laughs> All right, so we've transferred everything to this comb. And now, well, I don't know. How are we doing here separating these two coats? Um, are we getting separation? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we're just getting a lot of floofiness but I'm not seeing it really truly separating uh, separating out. Let's work with maybe a smaller amount. Let's take like this amount and let's uh, put this up again and see what happens with another pass. That's moving a lot quicker. I think perhaps I had too much fiber on the comb to start with. Okay, now what do we have left on this comb? Okay, so this is some softer, fuzzier, fluffier bits. It's not looking as junky as the other passes were. Um, so I am gonna put this aside, but in a different pile because this is possibly cartable. We might be getting into this inner coat section now that is usable, so I'll put that separate. And now over here, I am going to get my Diz. A Diz can be fancy or simple, but it's basically just something with holes that you can pull the fiber through. So now I'm going to pull and slide, pull and slide, pull and slide. And this is how I diz a combed top directly from the combs. We have managed to pull out those longer, silkier fibers and that is the tog right there. I stopped and pulled it separate when it started to get to this fluffier part. I had gone back and forth. There's still just a smidge of these longer ones kind of right there. You can see the staple length on those. Um, it's a little wider than the width of my palm. So that is our 
outer coat. Okay, you know what this inner coat, this fluffy stuff, is just pulling right off the comb. And it's, it's almost like its own little, it's not truly a bat, but that's sort of, <laughs> that's sort of the vibe I'm getting off of it. Um, it's just, it's, it's very fluffy, but it's not, it's not long and silky like its counterpart. It even almost has a different color. Like this is more brown and this is more black. And I think that is visually, it's really interesting. I also have these Indigo Hound combs, which were sent to me so generously by a subscriber and I'm very excited because as I work my way into these historical reconstruction projects I'll be able to use the combs that work the best for the fleece and make discoveries about how different styles of combs have different effects and these are interesting because they have a curve on the tines. Now a lot of historical finds where we can see that there were textile things going on. Combs have been discovered with curved teeth in them and so I am going to try um, these smaller ones are very similar to the Valkyries that I just tried but they're curved. So I'd like to try this one because it's a little beefier and just kind of go the other extreme and see what happens. I'm going to load this on the same way I did before, just lashing it on, not really concerned. Oops, there's a short, <laughs> oh, vacuum later. Um, <laughs> I'm not really concerned about which end is facing which way. I'm just getting it loaded onto the comb. Those shortcuts are really hard to spot in a dark colored fleece like this. Um, but I pulled those out, so let's, there's maybe a little much. Okay. <laughs> uh, wow. These are powering through. Like, I feel like I have just more oomph. Um, I think that just has to do with the mass of these, that there's some momentum when my arm comes down, but these are a lot easier. These are a lot easier to work with. Wow. See, I haven't tried these out yet, not really. And goodness. All right, so these bigger, heavier ones, I might even be concerned if I was using these to comb and blend with fine wools, something with a very delicate kind of micron, I might be concerned that I would actually rip the fibers. Is that a thing that can happen? Does anybody know? Tell me in the comments um, if your combs can be too powerful for your fiber because I almost feel like this could just rip through something and I wouldn't even realize it was ripping. I was not expecting uh, <laughs> this kind of Wolverine power to be happening here. Fascinating. Maybe it also has to do with the leverage I'm getting from the curve of the tines. Wow. That just blew through that. So let's see what we have left over here. Yep, it's very similar to what I had from the Valkyries. It is just these snarly bits, these short bits, um, not good for much. So I'm gonna put that to the side. And now we will switch and comb from the other direction. All right, what are we left with? <laughs> okay, second cuts, second cuts, second cuts. A little piece of VM, more second cuts. On here, I think we would be ready to use the Diz. So let's take off this outer coat and see what we're left with. Hopefully it's not still full of all these snips. This one I'm feeling much more like this is the outer coat. This is finally now separated the inner coat. Like this isn't the junky second cuts or 
neps or any of the snarls or tangles. Like I feel very much like we've done a good separation here. So let's take this off and then compare. Yeah, I feel like this is just fluffing out. <laughs> it's not even, it's too short to really be dizzed. Like it doesn't hold up in um, a comb top kind of fashion. Like it just really wants to be like a carded bat, just just a, a fluff, a pile of fluff. And that's what it's gonna be. All right, and then here is the very last bit that was still left on the comb. And this is just very, very, very short uh, little neppy bits. All right, friends, this is just so interesting to me. On the bottom here, we have the Valkyrie combs. This is the tog, and this is the thal. And then above this, we have the indigo hound combs. Those are the larger ones with the curved tines on them. And here we also have the tog and the cell. So outer coat, outer coat tog, inner coat cell from each of these combs. You can absolutely see the difference between this inner coat just being softer and fuzzier, fluffier and um, this outer coat being silkier. It even has more sheen and shine to it, uh, for sure. So let's talk about the combs themselves. I just grabbed one of each so I don't have to balance all of these combs because again, they're sharp. So um, I want to talk about this from a s historical recreation standpoint, and I also want to talk about this just as an informative what did I discover for any of you who are watching who may want to do some wool combing yourself. I get a lot of questions about which combs are the right combs for me. So here are some of my thoughts. First of all, historically, we don't have a manual describing the method of how people specifically were using combs back in the day. We don't. So this truly is all experimentation. There are so many different ways to use combs. There are just adjustments that are made based on the type of wool you're working with, what your comfort is ergonomically, how your wrists are. People make different adjustments for that. Um, people want true worsted and so they put all of the locks facing the same direction, all of those things. So please, please, <laughs> if you're curious about how to use combs, um, don't just only look at what I'm doing here. Maybe try it, see if it works for you. If it doesn't, keep searching, try different things, experiment, and um, and figure it out. I am That's what I'm doing here. I'm just experimenting. And so as far as what combs did a better job, I love the Valkyrie combs, but I love them in particular for wool that has all of the same staple length. I like these beasts better for the dual coated ones. Um, and that was, honestly, that was a little surprising to me. I thought that these larger combs were going to make me feel tired sooner but they didn't. They actually took a lot of the stress out of my wrists and put the, the, the weight and the momentum into the leverage of the comb itself. And that was a surprise to me. I really thought these would be more comfortable in that way. I like the Valkyries for uh, like Jacob. I love combing Jacob with the Valkyries. I love combing um, like a Corydale. Things that have a longer staple that I don't want to card but are kind of blocky and you're using the combs just to break it up, remove VM, remove any shortcuts or trashy bits, but not to actually separate coats. This one to me felt a lot easier to work with in terms of separating the dual coats. Another component of this has to do with how far the tines are spaced. And if you're working with a coarser wool, having the tines uh, further apart is going to make more sense. If you're working with a fine wool, having the tines closer together is going to make more sense. Um, because a, a coarser wool is not gonna 
move as easily through tightly packed tines and a fine wool is just, I mean, it's not gonna do anything if the tines are too far apart. It's just gonna come through it in chunks and then what's the point, what are we even doing? I have so much more practice to do with these combs. I have so many more discoveries to be had. I still have this whole fleece to work through. Um, I am gonna try the other Indigo Hound uh, combs and see uh, if those work out but as of right now the way that these busted through there this this is the one that is working the best for this Icelandic fleece hands down for sure I'd be really surprised if the other ones were as good um I might try the other ones on some thin sheep wool that I have in my stash but that's going to be another video for another day <laughs> we also have some spindle spinning to do and some more distaff projects to do weaving to come all of these things so make sure that you're subscribed I am just so excited to try out all these different things and make these discoveries of these different historical fabrics I'm so excited that you're here to join me of course check out my Instagram if you want to see some more up-close pictures of the things featured in my videos and leave a comment let me know what you think and if you have other tips or techniques or ideas for using combs let me know down in the comments all right friends i will see you in the next one and should i say happy spinning or happy combing i'm going down another tangent i need to focus on the video